uh, software as a service, so cloud-based, um, agile application lifecycle management. So we, we do the whole application lifecycle, um, and what I'm going to show you today is really how we do that at scale, kind of enterprise scale. Um, we're really more than just a team level. Um, quickly, just a little bit about us. Um, this is probably out of date now, so getting on to 150,000 users worldwide, 115 countries. 310, I think the last number I actually saw was 356 employees. Um, over a you know a huge range of, of organisations enterprises, um, have a look at the website if you if you really want to know more about us. We do the tool. The tool is kind of our, our the, the main product, but we do services as well. So I'm actually a, a coach with Rally. Um, so I go around. We don't just want to sell the tool and tell people that the tool is going to solve all our problems. We want to kind of help organisations be successful. So we provide coaching as well. So that they're, when they're using the tool, they're using it more successful, and then we try and be really active in the community as well. So that's why we're sponsoring this conference, um, and we have a whole lot of stuff on the website, hundred thousand content downloads. So lots of content on there, lots of community support. Um, so it's kind of the combination of the three things: the tool, the training, and the community that we can um, the, the really powerful combination. Okay, I've only got ten minutes. I'm I'm going to kind of really focus in on this demo, and I'm going to talk about what we're doing with the Nothing Well Scaled Agile Framework and what we're calling Agile Portfolio Management. So um, this is really a kind of a new market. There aren't any other Agile Portfolio Management tools out there. Really. There are portfolio Management tools that are trying to work with Agile, but what we think we're doing is taking Dean's Scaled Agile Framework and how he recommends doing um, portfolio management. And, and Dean was involved with Rally from the start, so we've been working with him on this over the last 10 years. We've kind of been involved in, in getting this to where it is today, putting that support into the tool. Um, can't really read that, but essentially there's, there's three layers of this, and I'll kind of try and go through it. I'll try and give the quickest scaled Agile framework training ever. The other portfolio level, this covers the entire business, anything in the portfolio. And this is, this is epic, really big things, things that are going to cross-release it. Um, and we've got architectural epics in there as well because when we're talking enterprise scale, you do need to do intentional architecture and have the architecture just in time. There's this portfolio allocation. So how, what are strategic goals? How are we investing for epics? Um, those epics then break down into a program backlog. So we're now getting down into the features. What are the features that are going to deliver those epics? And there's this concept of the agile release train. So at least every quarter we want to do a release of features. Um, ideally more frequently, but most organizations are not able to do continuous So we're looking at features. Features should fit in a, one of these quarterly releases, but they may be bigger than fitting in a normal sprint. So features then break down into stories, and that's where you're into your traditional agile teams. So this is kind of where we started, where most teams are, and then we're kind of working our way up, and we now have functionality from the top down. So this is a dashboard. This is the sort of information that we want to generate because what we're trying to do with Agile Portfolio Management is get real-time visibility, real-time reporting of the data that the actual Scrum teams, the Agile teams, are putting in. So instead of a project manager, a program manager, having to kind of generate stuff in a PowerPoint slide, we can create a dashboard like this which shows the reality of what's actually happening. Then we can use that. So we're getting feedback. In the same way that we value rapid feedback at the team level, we want the same sort of rapid feedback at the portfolio level. So the things we have here. We have a Kanban board. So this is showing the features. Features have a workflow, so they just get created. They don't have a, an entry. Then they go through a proposal stage. And this is just a sample. This, this workflow can be configured. But somebody will put, put some effort in to put a proposal for a, for a feature. If that proposal gets accepted, then we go into some more discovery work, probably going off and talking to customers, finding out what actual details we need to build. Then we go into developing it. Once it's developed and deployed, we want to go through a validation stage. We want to check, is the thing we built the right thing? And then it gets done. So this shows which features in a, in a kind of nice card wall style are in progress with some other information. You can see that once we go into development, uh, that's 50 per 6. We've got some progress indicators. So we can work out the progress of a feature based on it's user stories. How many user stories have not started? How many user stories are in progress? How many user stories have done? And that we can either do that on account of user stories, 
or we can do a, a sum, a roll-up of the estimates. So that's our first visualisation, just looking at the Kanban board, seeing what work is in progress, what state the work is. Let me go some little reports here. <coughs> the active epics, so epics, those things at the portfolio level. Which ones are being worked on? And we can see there's four here. This one's already completed. Uh, this one is about 50% done, this one's 6 percent done again. So we can start looking at progress. And we have the investment category here. So in this demo environment, we're using Jeffrey Moore's investment categories of optimize, neutralize, differentiate. Optimize stuff that you know where we're currently building now, customers are using, and we just want to make it better. Um, neutralize is something where there's a competitor out there that's got something that we don't, and we want to neutralize that competitive threat. Or differentiate, there's just something so for, for us, us, Rally Portfolio Manager, is a differentiating investment. We invested in this to differentiate ourselves from the market. So we can look at the epics, and again, are these, are these on track? Do these look healthy? Um, there's some little algorithms behind here, because we can put some anticipated, some planned start and end dates in. If we're getting towards when we plan to end it and we haven't started it, that's probably going to be a red flag. So we can, we can put some simple calculations in there. Yeah? Yes, so the portfolio is, is all your programs, and then your program will get breaking down into what we've made up of features, features get delivered by Agile teams. Yeah. Now, epics are the first two features. So, epics are at things that live at the portfolio level. Um, so, let me just kind of quickly. So, epics are these things here. Epics in your Epic backlog is your whole portfolio of really big things. So, Dean, Dean, you. Epics can also mean large stories. <coughs> Yeah, so this is Dean's using epics, and this is how Dean's using the word epic in this diagram. To understand the larger user story, because on a project level, we understand user story may refer to a feature of a, a product which we develop. On a portfolio level, we may talk about multiple products, yeah. scaling across uh, programs and projects. So what we found is that every organization has its own terminology. <laughs> so Dean's picked one. Um, we can. That you can configure, you can, you can have as many levels of these as you like, and you can call them what you like. So, Epic basically is a user story yeah, on a portfolio. Yes, very basic, yeah, very simple. Yeah. It's something that's going to take months, maybe years to do. Really, yeah. It's really epic. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, we got epics that are, that are in progress, and this is our epics that have, have not started, and what you can see here is this is showing the planned start date. Um, so we can give some idea and we can sort this so we can see which were the ones that we think we're going to be starting on next. Yeah. Can, can we get a similar view um, at the team level? Yes, yes, so teams, I'm kind of focusing on portfolio, but when we get down to the teams, teams can have their own Kanban boards as well, which show user stories, you can define workflow by user story. Um, and then once I've gone through this, I'll show you how, the, how the, you can drill down from an epic two features, two user stories, and then user stories can, so if you do decompose user stories um, iteratively, you can do that as well. Okay. I mean, I actually meant to ask, uh, maybe to part my accent, I, I didn't pronounce it well, um, theme in the sense of logical group of user stories? or, or Oh, theme. Groups? Um, yes, you can. Um, so one, one you can group by your investment category. Um, so what some organizations do is they have an extra layer in here that does that grouping for you. Okay. So um, I think at Rally we have an initi initiative layer. So you, you've got an epic. So actually you're, you're, or your initiative is your top layer in your epic. So yeah, because you can have multiple layers in here, you can have, that's because we found org some organizations, huge ones, had five or six layers in their portfolio because that's how they did that sort of grouping. I mean, one way to slice and dice the backlog is look at some of these cross-cutting concerns, like performance or you know transactions. Okay, grouping that. So we have so there's a couple of ways we we can you can define custom fields on these things okay. with a, with a drop down okay. if it's a finite set, and then you do reporting on that and grouping by that, filtering by that, okay. or we have just basic tagging functionality. So you can just use tags. So, so if I'm hearing tags. you right, so you you one would be able to view the progress uh, based on the speech groups. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Cool. And yeah, exactly. You're gonna. Everybody's gonna have their own personal preferred view right. of subsets of that. Right. And yeah, there's various ways you can do that. Okay. So it's not like hardwire for just no, no, no. Okay. Nearly everything in here is configurable. Um, the epics and then again features we can see which features are in, in progress with say to similar information and then um, so this is actually grouped by so this is um, PSI 2 I think so this is a, a uh, potentially shippable increment so this is a, a release train this is something um, kind of three months worth of work again we've grouped it by that all the features that we think are going to go into this release and then this back level of work that's been PSI 3 the next so again, that's a, that's that's one way of grouping things. Pretty much all of this stuff you can you can customize as a query language behind it. Um, so the other worth thing noting here, you can't really see it. This column here is slightly shaded because you can see we have a work memory of six here and we've we've got seven things in there. So it's just giving us a warning that we've exceeded our work memory. And then at the bottom, so this is the investment allocation. So what we've said is, for this kind of demo scenario, we want to equally invest a third of our budget into um, optimize, neutralize, differentiate. Yeah, differentiate, optimize, neutralize. That's what we want to be doing. This is what we've got in the plan. So what this is what we've planned in, and you can see that this is very different from that. So we can see that all we've done is we've planned a whole load of differentiate stuff in there. We haven't planned any. So that's feedback to us that our current portfolio of work that we're working on doesn't match what we want to be doing. And then you can see what you're actually doing. So as Mark gets work gets done at the moment, there's nothing needed here. This will get filled out. So again, you can be constantly checking in what's planned, what we've we done, how does that match onto to what our strategic plan is. So very much st uh, strategic. So what we're trying to do here is we talk about linking strategy to execution. Portfolio level is very strategic focused. Uh, down at the team level, it's execution focused, and we're trying to put a link between the two so you can check whether your execution is actually delivering to your strategy. And then the last thing on here is this timeline view. Um, with put these portfolio items, these epics and these features, you can put a plan, start, and end date. So when you think it's going to start and end, and that's you know finger in the air. <coughs> but um, what this is showing here. So this hatched line here is our plan, start, and end date. This is when we've actually started. So it's looked at all the user stories under a feature, and it said the first user story that a team pulled, planned into a sprint and started working on was started here. Now this is just based on the real data, based on what the Scrum teams are doing. And we can see that we know we've started later than we thought we were going to. And then we've got a little progress indicator, and that might say, well, um, that's at the moment showing 50% complete. So, well, we started it late, but look when we were going to finish it, and we we're already 50% complete. So it's not a problem. Yeah. So those pie charts, so the, the line charts, are they more interactive? Does if you click there, and it doesn't take you to the back wall, or? No, this one's not interactive. Okay. Uh, uh, this one is. So this one here. Um, so I didn't give a warning that the Wi-Fi is bad, which is not good when you're trying to demo a, a SaaS solution. It's back up again. Okay, let's see. That's why I loaded all the... So, okay, yeah, so I can expand this one out. And I can say, okay, underneath that... So this is actually a theme at the top. This is even higher than the epic. So that theme, what are my epics? What's the progress of those epics? This is epic 21. I can expand that one down. So, yeah, you can play around with this and interact with it. Absolutely. So this is this this is just going to quickly show you the hierarchy. So at the moment we've got these two themes here, um, the top level of our portfolio, um, and I can ex in the same way on that timeline, if it's going to work. Yeah, I can start drilling down these and expanding them out. And this should show that I go down to the story level. <coughs> So this is a theme, that's an epic. I, I know you can't read this, that's the feature, and then we're down into user stories here. And you can see the difference here, because here you've got, at the portfolio item level, you've got this nice simple percent complete, but it's calculating. Once we get down to user stories, you've got slightly more traditional, is it just planned, in progress, completed, accepted. So your more traditional kind of 
scrum schedule sets. Um, and we could keep drilling down. And then this one does the same thing, but it just starts at the story level. So development teams might be more interested in that sort of drill down. So um, I'm kind of, kind of out of time. What I've not shown you then is that once you get down to the stories, you're into traditional agile territory of having team backlogs, team scheduling work into sprints, getting them done, marking them done. Lots of the usual um, team dashboards like uh, burn downs, um, things like that. Any other questions? So capturing more details around with the, these portfolio items and user stories. It is like an online uh, progress track. We enter uh, you know, our words and all those stuff so, so, based on that we generate all the chances. So, so. But a visual uh, 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 progress uh, of, of various buildings or, or various work. Um, Visualize from a Yeah, so you can get a, a, a Kanban board view at the team level. Yeah, you can do that. And then again, you can define your own workflow. Each team gets its own view of its, its data. Um, there's, there's a whole load. I mean, I mean, I've kind of just scratched the surface here. Once you get it down to the team level, there's a whole load of extra data you can put in there. Um, you, you can have your acceptance criteria. You can associate tests and test suites with user stories. So when tests fail, the user story gets marked. Um, you can mark user stories as blocked, and again, that will ripple up as a report. So you can have a down on your dashboard, easily see blocked work. So where do you want to go and help teams? Because mostly I have seen in Ravi all the charts get generated. Yeah. But typically, you know, the uh, work in progress and stuff like that. You know, we don't have a diagrammatical representation. We get a more from a, 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 a tabular column level uh, flow, but not on a Okay, so here's a yeah the Wi-Fi is working. Here. So here's a, a kind of a more team-based dashboard. Again, you can see all the blocked work here. So um, program manager, scrum master might have that sort of view. Just kind of a summary. So I'll give you great data there actually for the release, burn downs. Uh, I wonder if I can find a yeah team Kanban board. So this is showing for Agile Team 1. They came up with an original name. So again, they've defined their own kind of fairly complicated work space. And yeah, these are all their user stories that they're, they're being prioritized. It's probably stuff that they've uh, sprint backlog, ready for dev, dev. For visualization, this is blocked. Um, if something, if I want to mark something as ready, so I can say um, that might be way of saying it's a, a finished development on it. So yeah, that, that's a, this is a, a more visual way of looking at it. Um, and, and we're actually moving in this direction, moving more towards this card view based. So even, um, I don't think I've got it set up on here. We have a iteration planning board, which again is all just dragging cards into across into iterations rather than the, the list view, which is probably what you're more familiar with. Yeah. So I was looking for this Yeah. Right. So we do things uh, twice. Yeah, you got a bit of duplication there. But that keeps the spirit on because people basically see the flow. Uh, yeah. But still, data needs to go on. I was thinking if they could have any feature like this. Yeah, this makes it a lot easier to, to update in the tool if you're doing it physically because you're just dragging stuff around. Yeah, I mean, this is, yeah, this is drag and drop. I can 
Fuller over there. Um, and actually, we have a even newer version of this that hasn't made it onto the demo environment yet. And it's just kind of pre-released within. You know, so even I can get at it in our with our logins, but nobody else can yet. Which has all inline editing and um, even, even it's even nicer than this. So we're trying to we're, we're trying to really kind of up the ante on the usability. So that's that should be available to the public. I don't know, weeks, months. Yeah, uh, it's not really my job to say that sort of thing, but <laughs> going through just final testing and tweaking, and maybe maybe this quarter is that safe? <laughs> if it doesn't, don't blame me. It's that's not a that's not a promise. Yeah, I say Steve can say that. We don't have like fixed release release dates or stuff. We release continuously, so we just have to final testing. Yeah, so we we do weekly releases, and then we have a kind of a it's not quite continuous deployment, but when we release stuff, we then turn it on subscription by subscription. So the first subscription that gets turned on for, is for Rally employees. Um, and then we'll kind of slowly roll it out. So that gives us some, some better testing, some gradual testing. If there's a problem, we can roll it back or fix it or just turn it off again. So it's kind of feature toggle type technology. Yeah, you can either. so. The iteration is a, is an object in itself. You can add notes to that. Um, so to some teams will then actually have a, that on their dashboard, or they'll just have a little panel which shows the retrospective notes for the last retrospective, so it's constantly visible. Um, every every URL is unique, so you can email a URL. That, that's. Um, As a, you know, to managers or somebody, we want to just uh, send the retrospective part uh, uh, to make them understand mm -hmm. what is happening. You know. What we probably do there is we have an API, um, so you can expose reports ex outside of Rally, and it, you just create a read-only user that, that logs into Rally, pulls the data out, and then you can embed that in a wiki or SharePoint. So that's typically what we'll do with that sort of thing. Do you, do you do you have reports within the product? Do you have reports in I mean, pretty much, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, there's a whole load of, um, so there's, there's two kind of ways of doing that. One, we have some standard built-in reports, um, which are things like burn, release burn downs, sprint burn downs, cumulative flow, but then there's a whole lot of apps. So we've kind of gone down the app route where you can create your own custom pages and embed any old apps in them, whatever's in the catalog. Um, yeah, so some of the reports, again, um, we're kind of roll, slowly rolling this feature out. You can you can either print directly from there, or you can save it as a JPEG. Okay. And then you could email the JPEG. Yeah, so that's the other way. Or some of this stuff you can uh, export to Excel and then generate stuff in Excel if you want. And uh, Rally, does it offer any uh, demonstrative program or short and installable program in a sense? Let's say I want to evaluate the value. Yeah, we can give you a trial. Yeah, contact. Say, I think you can sign up for a trial just from the website. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, Community Edition, yeah. Community Edition is, is the free version. Yeah. That's probably worth it. We have a, we have a kind of a, um, how, do you do, how would you describe it? A, a kind of scaling set of products from a, the Community Edition, which is free but limited functionality. So, you know, this is the, the top end, you get everything. So, but you could start with a free one if you just want to play around with it. Yeah, typically, let's say, when we go for a buying option also, we need to demonstrate the management. Yeah, so we can set you up with a trial subscription. And tr if after the trial subscription, if you choose to buy it, you just extend it. So you don't have to start from scratch again. So, trials we, if you want to show off. Yeah. Off, yeah so, in, in, and in a trial, we want to get you using it for real. So you know we'd come and we'd That's give you some training option. and coaching and whatever help we need. Free so version is great for real simple use. Yeah. 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 The free version is really just targeted at single small team. Yeah. Right. Thank you, everyone.